transform Kenya. Out of a whole bunch of books, I'm talking about Ombi. I'm, I'm making prayer an adventure. That's right. This guy at Mavuno, we call him Pastor Sizzle. Pastor Silver Surfer. Because this guy is passionate about prayer and about raising leaders. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, <laughs> races, demographics, black, white, it doesn't matter. Put your hands together for Pastor Simon. The man. Bravo. Woo! I didn't pay them to do that. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. How are you guys doing? Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Well, I missed last week um, uh, as we celebrated eight years. I think Pastor I am told you I traveled. I just want to bring you greetings. I was in Haiti. Uh, the rest of you call it Haiti. <laughs> I was in Haiti, and we had a good time there. We had a men's conference, uh, which really went well. And the church there sent me to come and greet you. So receive your, uh, the greetings from your brothers uh, across the other, on the other side. And secondly, I passed through the U.S. Uh, we had a training in one of the partnering churches, a church called Southeast in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, and we are building our relationship with them as well as Mavuno. So they send me with greetings. So do you receive them? Yes. All right. Good to see all of us. And can't wait to see what the Lord is going to be doing. Now, uh, this month, we're going to be talking about uh, the games we play, Hunger Games, basically. And let me just say as well, before I jump into that, I was very proud of our airport staff. I came in just the night before last night. Uh, Friday night, the fire had happened. Uh, we were expecting some chaos. And it was amazing just the way those people were helpful. I mean, everybody was just, uh, someone gave me a phone even to call. Uh, they were directing us here and there. It was a little chaotic uh, on the tents, uh, bugs all over uh, the runway. Uh, I mean, it, it was but to see the way they acted and the way they just did their thing and how dedicated they were. And I could see these guys had been working the whole day and they were tired. I mean, I was so proud of this country. And I was especially proud because uh, the manager of the airport is a Mavunite. Uh, and so just to see that happen, it was a big thing. Let's give it up for our brother Kobudi for, and the airport staff for a good job. Hunger Games. I don't know how many of you have watched that movie. All right. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. But some of you have. Uh, and it's just about dangerous games of life uh, and what happens. How people could die and others could get into trouble as they play the games of life. That's what it's about. Uh, and we're going to be talking about Hunger Games and connecting this uh, to how we live. In fact, as I look around and as I've talked to people and I know as uh, uh, you sit here today, all of us want to live well. Everybody wants to end well. You want by the end of your life people to be able to say this guy or this woman sleeping in here uh, whose body is here, they lived well. You begin to reflect and say eventually, you see, uh, because of my age right now, I'm thinking more about the end of my life than the beginning. I'm beginning to see the end, uh, at least to some degree. I'm beginning to think, how am I going to end this game of life? And we're going to be reflecting on that all month. And you know, what we all want in life is some measure of satisfaction. We want to feel good about this life. We want to have some fun. We want to feel we, we live with some significance and direction in life. That's, that's what we want. Everybody is trying to search and grip something in life and to feel like I lived well. And we're going to be looking at that. And uh, I think this is going to be a deep month and a fun month as well. And I really can't wait uh, uh, for the weeks uh, that are coming. But before I get into that, let me just say, uh, guys, I thank God for the stories we had here. 
and really life is about stories. And as I think about Mavuno, eight years old, just the stories we have seen of what God has done, it's amazing. And mine is a story to be celebrated as well. But God has been at work. How many of you say God has been working in my life? Let's give him a clap and celebrate the almighty God. <laughs> almighty God. God is good. We're going to look at four basic rules of life. Uh, this game of life. Guidelines that will ensure that you're playing the right game in the right way and getting the right course. That's what we're going to be talking about uh, all month. I'm going to be your trainer. We're going to be referring to the coach uh, who is Jesus Christ. And so let me invite you to put on your sports gear and let's go to the field. How many of you know what this is? I know it's a ball, but what kind of a ball? <laughs> yeah? Football. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of football, American football. It looks like rugby ball. Uh, it definitely, definitely doesn't look like a soccer ball uh, for all the ladies. Um, <laughs> a soccer ball is a little round, except for the soccer moms. Uh, uh, but uh, this is a ball. Now, let me ask you a question. Which game growing up? Some of you are still growing up. But which game did you like or do you still like most and why? What do you like watching? Let, let's put it that way. Maybe not playing. But what do you like watching? Which game and why? Turn to your neighbor and tell them. Now, you better not say cricket because I, I'm sure you don't know what that is. What game do you like to play and why? Well, <clears throat> Pastor Angie here is saying Kati. That's not a game. That's not a game you go to competition for. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Shh. How many of you enjoy cricket? Ah, you guys are strange. <laughs> You, you know, I can't understand what they're doing in cricket. I've tried to watch a few times. I gave up. Uh, maybe I need to hang out with you, but I'm not sure I want to learn. But uh, cricket is, I just wonder, how are they have, having fun? What is even the score? When do they know when someone has scored? I just can't understand. Who is with me in this? Yeah, the majority of us uh, live alone, these strange guys here. Uh, how many of you love golf? You love to golf. Oh, these are the, the guys. <laughs> and Dungu, I, I didn't think you belong there. Oh. You're just a wannabe. All right. Uh, that's okay. But uh, I, I tried to play golf the other day. And someone took me there and gave me that thing. And because I had watched Mr. Bones... <laughs> I thought this thing is very easy to play. You just get a stick, hit the ball, uh, face towards the hole, and, and take it there. It didn't go. <laughs> Number one, I missed the ball. And I wonder, how can I miss this big thing? So I said a prayer, and I aimed again. <laughs> I got it this time, but it went a different direction. I think it was just rebellious ball. But uh, anyway, uh, golf. It's for those of us who are thinking about, yeah, uh, want to join the club. But I love soccer. I just love soccer. It's just simple. It's passionate. Just think about the passion of the game. You know, the chance. The Mexican wave. Let's try it here. From there, one to go. All right, some of you are just doing this. <laughs> There's a technique to it. Okay, let's try it one more time, a Mexican way. From here, one to go. 
Wow. All right, give yourself a clap, yeah? That went well. I love that. Then the skill. I mean, those guys get, pay, uh, get paid awesome amounts of money just for what they do. I mean, the way they catch the ball, those goalkeepers have a, an ability to fly into the air and catch the ball and go to bed with it. Uh, you know, they just do amazing things. And some guys who just go through people as if there's no one in the field, just the skill of it. Others who take a kick, you know, uh, and it goes round, it curves into the back of a net. For all of you who don't know what that is, that's a score when it goes to the back of the net. Uh, I mean, just amazing things about soccer. Uh, I love it. The clarity of a score. When it gets into the net, everyone knows and everybody celebrates. You don't have to be a genius to understand that. You don't have to, class for, to go to class for golf to understand that. You just watch it and you love it. I mean, I love soccer. How many of you love water sports? Water sports, let me see. Well, I'm not a good swimmer, so I love to watch them. Now, one time someone convinced me into doing something really dangerous. I don't know why uh, I agreed, but uh, not knowing how to swim well, this guy, it was in the Atlantic uh, 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 Ocean, uh, and he told me, let's go into a little thing, you know, a little small thing. You know what I'm talking about? It's called a kayak. The two of us, let's go out and just enjoy going up and down the waves. So we're going to the cold ocean, and I'm praying, and I told him, do you know I don't know how to swim well? He said, don't worry, I got here. Uh, it's going to be okay here. I know how to swim well. I've saved people before. Uh, I don't think it's going to get into that. Uh, but let's go out. So we go out. We're rowing this little thing. I'm having a little bit of fun, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, but, you know, at some point, I looked out. And I saw a wave that wasn't ordinary. (laughs) And I told him, check out, is that okay? Uh, Are we fine? Uh, uh, He said, "Uh, frankly, I'm not sure. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I thought about my wife and my kids at that point. Uh, And so he told me, let's go back to the shore. I I don't like that. And so we began rowing back uh, towards the shore. But I could see the thing is catching up with us. Before long, the thing was on us. And it just, he said, my brother, just hold on to the thing. I'll get you if it gets to that. And the way it just threw us up. And I don't know what happened, but we separated with the kayak. And the next thing I know, I was in the water and the kayak was over me and I was trying to get out and I forgot every trick of swimming at that time and I knew I was going down. I said a prayer. (laughs) Let's just say why I'm here is because my friend got me. (laughs) You know, he found me somewhere, pulled me up, we swam to the shore and I was okay, but I was scared. I said, never do that again. Bad idea if you don't know how to swim. That's my experience with water. It's amazing how water, something nice, something you drink, something that satisfies us, something you might have used this morning to take a bath. I know it's cold, so some of you. uh, uh, But something really which is life, like this. It's amazing how it can kill someone. All right. Don't take away my ball, man. Yeah, just, just. Thank you, sir. It's amazing how something like this, just some water, could kill you if you play with it. It's amazing. Good water. Water is life. The water could kill you. Just like we have uh, water sports. I believe we have games in life. And some of us, them are dangerous. Like they played with an iceberg, the Titanic, and you know what happened? They sank. They played with their iceberg, uh, you know, in the ocean, underestimated it. And you know what happened to that huge ship? Water can kill. That's what I'm talking about, floods. Talking about choking. It could choke you, and you could die. Uh, You could drown. 
You could drink it contaminated and you get into trouble and you realize these games uh, with water uh, could actually kill someone. Isn't it the same with life? That we play some games with life and they seem to be, uh, you know, just no more kawaida games. But before we know it, some of us in, are in trouble. We play around with relationships. You know how it goes. You meet someone at Java. You exchange, uh, you know, you start talking, hey, by the way, it's really cold these days. You know, that's how it begins. And before you know, you have exchanged telephone uh, and you're enjoying it. Uh, what are your hobbies? How are you doing? Where do you live? You know the story. Some of you are narrowing your eyes in focus. Uh, but you know this story and you know where it's going. And before you know it, someone is going to get hurt. You've been that road before. You know how it ends. And you know how someone walks away with pain. The games we play, excitement, fun, and eventually some pain. The games we play around money. Think about corruption and how we get hurting our economy and get hurting people in this country because of bribe, receiving and giving it away, and how we pervert justice as a, as a result. The games we play in marriage, or they are played to you. You just wanted a good marriage. That's all you wanted. You're just playing the game of love, and you wanted it to end well. But then something happens. The marriage is gone. Maybe the guy leaves you, or maybe you leave him. Whatever happens. Or maybe you just took it for granted, and you find divorce, the pain, the tears on the pillow, the kids and what they begin to experience. Again, the games we play around love. What about the games around substances, like they told us? You begin some wine, and you enjoy it, and gets a little bit too much. It becomes a bondage. What about pornography? What about smoke? We begin smoking something. Before you know it, you're chained, you're shackled. What about drugs, as he told us? What about crime? Begins like a joke, and before you know it, eventually, you're in trouble with the law. What about power and the misuse of it, and fame, and things like those? I mean, the games we play in life. Let me ask you, my dear friends, do you ever feel like you're a little desperate? That you want something? You started out just to get some satisfaction, to get some fun. But someone has said the mass of men, and women of course, lead lives in quiet desperation. They're playing some games in life. They started out with good reason. They just wanted some chums, wanted a good ride, wanted some money, wanted some power. That's all they wanted. But before they know it, they just get to a place where they say, I can't get the satisfaction I thought I would get. What's up? Quiet desperation. That's what many of us live in. Is it that we are not smart? Why do we play these games that get hurting us? Is it that we are not smart? I don't think so. I think we are smart. It's a search that God put in us, a reaching out for something, a thirst, some hunger. We want something. We want to be satisfied. We want to live well. It's something we are reaching out for. We want a score in life. That's what we want. Now, unfortunately, many times we just don't play the game well. Now we're going to be looking at a story, at a story I really love. A story of a woman. She's not named because she could be any of us. The Samaritan woman. That is John chapter 4. And we're going to be pulling out some powerful rules about this game of life. Let's go to the book and let's look at this. John chapter 4. I love the way this story talks to us. John chapter 4. We want to read verse 1, right from verse 1. Verse 1 says, The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more than the disciples, uh, more, baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, he left Judea 
and went back once more to Galilee. Now, if you understand the geography of Israel, uh, Galilee is to the north, uh, uh, Samaria is in the middle, and Judea is to the south. So for him to leave Judea to go to Galilee, there was Samaria in the middle. And so uh, he decided to go through there. Verse 4. Now he had to go through Samaria. Now, this is what most of the Jews did because of some trouble I'm going to be telling you shortly. But most of them, they never really went through Samaria. They avoided Samaria. So they went towards the coast and walked up the coast to get to Galilee to avoid Samaria. In fact, it was easier walking to go down to the sea and along the sea and up to Galilee than to go through Samaria. But the Bible says he had to go through Samaria. He was compelled by something. He had a date with someone. There's somebody he needed to meet. So he decided to go through it. It was a choice. It wasn't a geographical uh, uh, mandate. He could have gone around another route. Verse 5. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. This place had a story to it. Verse 6, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, don't you love it that Jesus was real, was human, he was tired of walking. Yes, he was the son of God, but he was a man as well. Sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Most scholars believe this was noon. Some say three, but uh, it was probably noon. Verse 7, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, I love it, will you give me a drink? Innocent line to start a conversation, isn't it? Uh, how is the coffee? Do you like it today? Hey, by the way, how is the weather? Hey, hey, by the way, what did you think about this airport fire? Do you think it was terrorist or it was sabotage? Uh, innocent line. Well, will you give me some drink? I'm thirsty. And I know you came to fetch some water. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. Very convenient. Very convenient. I believe Jesus strategically set this up because he knew these disciples might have issues with me talking to Samaritans. So let's get rid of them. Two or three people would have bought bread. They didn't need to go all of them to leave Jesus alone. But he set it up because he knew what was coming. I think he had an idea uh, what was going to come. So there wanted to be two of them, a table for two. You know what I'm talking about. So, will you give me a drink? Verse 9, the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew? I'm a Samaritan. I love this conversation. Sounds so natural. Uh, just pushing back, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. What's up with that? You know, a good way just to push the conversation a little further. You take coffee, I take tea. Uh, you do this, I don't do this. Why are you talking to me? Who are you? How can you ask me for a drink? That was what he said. How did she know he was a Jew? Maybe the way he was dressed. Maybe like a rabbi. Uh, and maybe the way he looked. Well, I'm a Samaritan. So he said, why are you doing this? Now, some of you might know, but for a long time, Jews and Samaritans had no relationship. They were seen as outcasts. They were seen as impure breed. Because many years before this, some Jews were taken to Assyria. And they were not supposed to associate to those guys. But they intermarried and they produced this breed now called Samaritans. And they came back and lived around Samaria. And these guys were considered impure. So they used to worship at the mountains there instead of going to Jerusalem. They couldn't be allowed to go to Jerusalem because it was holy. The holy city. And so they worshipped around there as we're going to be seeing as we move on. So you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. You're a man, I'm a woman, and it's in public. No good idea. That's what she's saying. We shouldn't be doing this. Do you know that line? We shouldn't be doing this. Why are we even talking? Verse uh, 10. Jesus answered her, If you knew, <laughs> I love this, the gift of God and who it is, 
that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would, he would have given you living water. Don't you love that? So you have no clue, woman, who you are talking to. If you knew, you would be talking differently. For you'd be so excited, you'd be talking to him and say, give me the gift and give me yourself. That's what he's, uh, he was saying, that you have no clue who it is who was waiting for you at this well. Sir, now he, she got official. I'm talking to a big guy here. He's a big deal. So let me address him appropriately. So he said, she said, sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. See what she was saying? What's up with you, guy? I can see you're a big deal, but simple uh, logic. You need a container to get some water. How are you going to give me a gift? You're asking me for water because you have nothing to draw with, and now you're telling me you're going to give me some? What's up with that? I don't understand it. How are you going to do that? Now, I love curious people. Where can you live living water? Verse 12. Are you greater than our father Jacob. She's even now questioning uh, what he claimed. Are you greater? You're saying you're a big deal or something, but do you understand Jacob, who is our father, and how this place is significant? Do you understand how much this place means to me? Are you greater than our father, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and herds? Verse 13, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Let's read verse 14 together. One to go. What an offer. He said, you're going to drink this water of Jacob, and you're going to thirst again. You're going to be here uh, the day after. But look at this. The water that I'm going to be giving you, <laughs> you will never need to come here again. That's what he told her. Now, uh, it's going to be like a spring of water coming out of you. It's going to be awesome. It's going to satisfy you. Let me finish with verse 15. The woman said to him, Sir, still addressing him officially. Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty. She was smart. If there's something like that, give it to me. I love it. I've been looking for that. I don't want to keep coming here to draw water. What a story. I love that story. But you see, it doesn't just talk about the, uh, uh, this woman and Jesus. It really talks about the games of life. Look up here. Now, the first thing I love about this story, ABC. Number one, attentive. That this woman came to the well, found some man sitting there, and began a conversation, and she listened. She listened to his story and the conversation. You know, this is what I believe, my dear friends. As we go through life, as we play the games we play, relationship, getting the job, buying the ride, getting into debt, all of these things, as we play them, there's someone, a Jesus, who sits at the well of the games of life trying to get your attention. At that point, brother, as you were doing crime, as you were, uh, others were being shot, there was a God right there talking to you and saying, I love you, man. I don't want you to die like this. I have a gift for you. I am sitting here. If only we could be attentive and reflect. There is a God at the well of life. Whatever you do, wherever you go, whatever games you're playing right now, there's a Jesus right there in that search who is trying to tell you, hey, by the way, I can see you love this water, but I am the gift. I am the living water, and I could give that to you. You see, all of these games are meant to bring us to a point where we realize, unless we are insane, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, that they will end up into trouble. We have hit some walls. We have hurt ourselves in the game of life, broken a leg, destroyed our, uh, our relationships. God and pain in the heart. And there's a God who is trying to tell you, I need you. 
I am here. You don't have to do this. I could give you something different. B, the barriers we go through. You see, we may know Jesus is there and he's speaking to us, but then this lady pushed back. You're a man, I'm a woman, gender barriers. You're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, cultural barriers. But more than that, even religious barriers. You don't know who I am and what I've done. I'm daddy. You're a rabbi. You're holy. It's easy for you. It's not easy for me. Religious barriers. Isn't it amazing the barriers we bring to the cross? And we say, God, I don't deserve. I'm not a good man. I'm not like Pastor Linda. I'm not that type. Look at my life. Look at how many hearts are broken. Look at what I've been doing. Look at my life. And look, I mean, me being a Christian, it doesn't add up. I can't do that. Maybe some others. Barriers. Pushing back. Do you know, Jesus, that I've done three abortions and I'll probably do another. I mean, I'm not the type. I don't belong there. I'm not acceptable. The, those are uh, the pushbacks we give to Jesus. But I love, uh, you know, the third one, curious. This woman, she was curious enough to continue the conversation. I love it. She just continued to push back. Now, you're a Jew. Why are you doing this? Why are you talking to me? You talk about living water. How do I get it? You don't even have a bucket. She was curious to push this conversation to the very end. But what I love it, at the end of it, look here. At the end of it, she said... You mean you have some water that can give me the satisfaction I've been looking for? I've been coming here to draw water. I've been searching for something. I've heard friends. I've done the sex thing. I've done the porn. I've done the money. I've done the stealing. I've done all of these things. You mean you could give me some water that would give me the satisfaction I've been looking for? You mean this can change? That's what she was saying. And when she was told, yes, I am the giver and I'm the gift at the same time, she said, I want it. I want it. Give that to me. She said, yes. Seems like the search never comes to an end. Until we begin to realize that Jesus is the water we've been searching for. Real satisfaction in the games of life. My one point, my dear friends, in this sermon is this. To score in life, listen to this. To score in life, get tight with the coach. Get to know the coach. Get to date the coach. For the... Uh, uh, for us who love this thing of relationship, get to know the coach, connect with him, get tight with him. You know, this is a game in which the coach invites us, not to the game first, but to himself first, and then to the game. The outcome of the game, the scores we get in life, are determined by this one thing, your relationship with the coach. Love the coach. And you win the game. Connect with him and you win the game. Find him. Know him. Love him. And you have a score. This is the one point of my message. Now let me invite a friend of mine here just to help me bring this home. My brother Dennis. Where are you, Deno? Let's give it up for Dennis, my, my guy here. Come on, let's give it up a little bit more. <clears throat> hey, man. You look the part. Morning, Taj. Are you doing well? I'm okay. Just stand close to my water here. Now, you look nice, by the way. Yeah. That's why you say thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, thank you. Let me ask you, we're talking about this woman. We're talking about water. We're talking about the games of life. You played some games before, right? Yes, I did play some games. But not Angry Birds. So. <laughs> Someone said that was their favorite. Uh, so. Angry Birds. Yes. All right. You play some games. What, what kind of games? Uh, I know you were searching for something we talked earlier. Just like this woman. She was not necessarily a wicked woman. She was just trying to get something. But got into trouble in the process. What are some of the games you play? So I, I have been here before. 
some of you might have heard my story. Well, if I say Tripod is still, most of you will probably wave. Uh, that is the name I used to go by. Uh, the games I used to play were alcohol. I can actually explain to you the distillation process mm. back and forth. Mm. And uh, I knew that by experience. Uh, I, was, I was an alcohol addict. Uh, I could do maybe a liter or three per day wow. and still be at work by eight hey, and still perform. Yes. Uh -huh. So in between, of course, there are the ladies. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so the wine, the women? Well, mine, the W, I haven't. Mine are still two. Uh -huh. I don't know if maybe vodka in another language would start with W, but yeah. I was very faithful to it. Mm -hmm. No whiskey, no nothing, it's just straight up. Mm -hmm. So from, from an early age, I knew I, knew I had issues. Uh, coming from a family where the dad is a bishop. Your right, dad was a bishop? He still is the right reverend. Okay. XXX, -X -X. yes. Yeah, man, and you're playing all of these games in a bishop's home. And he's paying the rent. Okay? Well, all right, all right. L let's continue. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not thinking about my son right now. I'm just, uh, I'm just thinking. All right. Yes. So you play these games. Wine, women, and I know the women, you are taking it to another level, right? Yeah, so once you perfect one thing, then you go to the next. So when it comes to the ladies, I... I, I kind of had to, you know, take it to the next level. I'm terrible at names, so I kind of figure the only way I remember names is if I do the alphabet. So you'd find a chick called Anne, you tick A, then you'd find maybe a Beth or mm. Betty or mm. Beatrice, mm. then you go to Catherine, like that. So I did the entire alphabet. You even got Z. Z was impossible. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, anyway, yes. this is a serious matter. Let's not laugh about it but so, hey man so, so you're just hurting all of these women in town yeah so in second year i did the z the a to z and then someone actually dared me now to you know like how fast can you i don't know who have watched the gone in 60 seconds mm. nicolas cage mm. yeah so we did that for ladies now so you'd see a chick and then you say make her gone in 60 seconds so i have Clock is ticking, That's yeah. how fast you could get a number yeah, so or something. Yeah, so if you can get her number in 60 seconds, mm. maybe then someone will probably, you know, buy you drinks, VIP or something, yeah? Mm. So if she actually shows up, so you'd have to get her number and actualize it. So you get her number, then she shows up then. Wow. Well, if you want, if you could maybe like a wager for 5, 10K, yeah. All right, let me ask you, what are you looking for? Why are you doing this? Your dad is a bishop, you're a good-looking young man, you're working in a bank. So... I don't know, from, I think, based on the fact that we never connected with him, mm -hmm. I never felt like I was man enough. So, mostly it was for affirmation, where, you know, your fellow guys are looking at you, you are at 60 seconds, you're now taking it to 48, or you're the last man standing, a party that started on Wednesday, uko uko bad on Monday, you know. So, the so, so you are just trying to prove yourself a man, of course, the fun that goes with it. Yes. Uh, so you are in a search for something. So, I was in a search uh, for something. First forward, you're playing these games. I'm sure they're hurting people and they're hurting you. You know, the drunkenness and everything. How did you show up in Mavuno? So it was really funny. Well, so one of my really close friends, uh, she's called Shiro. She, she knew my life then. She knows about my dad, how scary he is. So she gives me a call, she's like, oh, we used to party with her. So I'm like, hey, you, hey, what's up? You're so lost. Yeah, Nikwani, what's up? She's like, no, I found God. I'm like, chick, buwacha is a bangi. So well, tell me what's up. So she's like, there's this church I go to. You know, it's really cool. You should show up. And the usual, what's in it for me? She's like, okay, let's make a deal. If you show up, I see you, 3K cash. So when is I'm thinking, ah, sina mpango Sunday? Ah, well, I'll think about it. So on Saturday... Then on Sunday I show up, I'm thinking, where is Shiro? I, as in, this place has so many people, I can't see, I need to collect the money. And then it will lock. So, I can't find Whatever her. Whatever that means, but... Yes, it's yeah. removing hangover. <laughs> okay. So, I show up late, then there's an Asha. So, I'm thinking, this Asha is really fine, yeah? If I'm not going to get the money, at least I'll get her number. Hey, man. Ashes, you need to be praying for guys <laughs> like this. Yeah. All right. But yeah. That, so you sat in the service? Yeah, so I'm sitting in the service, and uh, Shiro was serving in Teens Connect. So I had to wait the entire service. 
So I call her, and then she gives me the cash, but I can't, I can't find the usher. So the funny thing is, on my way in, I was actually late, but I noticed there was a billboard here. Yeah? The Mizizi background is a very... Guys, you'll admit this, that chick is hot, yeah? So I'm thinking, okay, I can't get 3K, I can't get the usher. Who knows this chick? Uh, so maybe, let me... So I have 3K, I'm thinking, okay, from now our financial point of view, I've been overpaid. So how about I come to more services and even out to a K per service? And then maybe on the third service, I'll have met the... Uh, this the guy loves coach. justice, right? Fairness. One K for a... Yes. And so you decided to keep coming. So I kept coming. On the third service, I think in mid, mid-July, there was an altar call made. No, there was a uh, service call made about Mizizi. So I'm thinking Mizizi, each church now. I, I can't you stick to English names for heaven's sake. So how does even Mizizi mean? And then... I'm sitting next to some guy. He even looks lost at me, so I can't even ask him. And then, unfortunately, I had spared some empty seat. I couldn't demand a kitty apple. Like, well, okay, maybe. So I asked Shiro, she's like, oh, Mizizi is this transformational program. It's 10, 10 weeks. You know, you get to know about yourself. I'm thinking, I already know myself. Mm-hmm. And she's like, okay, only, the only thing that works for you is money. So <laughs> I'll pay for 3K. you 3K yeah. for the Mizizi and 5Gs. If you complete the program, I'm thinking five, ten weeks, well, okay, we'll see. Yeah. So I signed up. So between, the, the class was stuck in September. Yeah. It was in July. So I'm looking at it in, from a point of view of, uh, I've been told there are different classes. So the trick is to figure out which are the hottest chicks. So you have to come, Unakai region in KWST. This one looks like Parkland. So I figured, well, since I work in Chiromo, uh, Parkland's Baptist, probably there will be Barbie ladies here. So I sign up. Tuesday. It's amazing how for, for all the wrong reasons, God still gets to us. Eh? God is just gracious. Come on, let's celebrate God who just deals with people like this. Brother. Well, thank God you're here. But yeah, so let's, let's finish up this thing. Uh, I can't wait for the end of it because it's good. So uh, you and Mizizi, uh, you eventually come to Mizizi. You stayed in church until September just to wait for Mizizi. Uh, you love the Salmon series, as you told me. Uh, you get into Mizizi. What happens there? So in Mizizi, I was the first in class. I actually felt lost and wasted. Yeah. So I get into class. I'm very impatient, so I can't see anyone. It's 5.30, it's going to close to 6. On my way out, I met the facilitator. She's like, don't worry, it's the first day, guys. You know, take the time to, you know, come in. So I figure, let me give it uh, like half an hour more. Who knows? You know, you might miss out on some hot chick, yeah? So, like, okay, let me just 30 minutes. So if no one comes, I'm so out of this place. So I chill 30 minutes, guys just showing up. Then the first two, I think, a couple. I'm like, seriously? Okay, so I chill. So... The first day, it was a Tuesday, there wasn't much, it's just being given, you know, your name tags, get to know each other, Kidogo, occupations, get to figure out maybe someone's region and stuff. So, second week, a bit of ice breaking. Then on the third week, I'm thinking, okay, no, this, seriously, I, I'm not earning my money. So I figured, let me just share a bit of my story, and maybe guys will, I don't let me see how it goes, yeah? You're saying it's transformational, let me test the waters. So I tell guys, Kidogo, just Kionja to yeah. So I give them, hey, I'm Dennis, BCD. And the they, they, said, they must have said, hi, Dennis. <laughs> yes, hi, Dennis. And yeah. they say, hi, Dennis. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I'm in good hands, yeah? yeah. So yeah, when so I opened up, something really amazing happened. Everyone warmed up. They started saying, you know, and then you're looking at this well dressed chick or Jama in a tie and stuff. You're thinking, okay. You can't even relate the story he just said and how, and how look. he looks. You're thinking, yeah. dude, you have issues. Eh? They were, by the way, they were thinking the same about yeah. you. So, so I actually part, felt so comfortable, yeah. you know, even sit back and think, siko peke yangu. All right. So, and, and so after that, I know you, you, you went on and you earned your money after the 10 weeks. Yes. But how did you get transformed? How did you meet Jesus at the well? So, Mizizi has this amazing thing called a graduation. Yes? So, we have even t-shirts. Ours was Potter's Clay. The LG we formed. So, in Potter's Clay, we did a, a gig over there. We danced. Our team actually won. And then, 
I just in in at the start of Mizizi of I was feeling this each yeah? we are in church is you know, something biting biting yeah? yeah so I was feeling that kaich and then it got stronger for the 10 weeks I just felt there is something there's some fulfillment I'm getting from Mizizi there's something well then I didn't know it was God who was actually speaking you know yeah? so I'm figuring okay there's something I'm getting but you know the network is not still so clear mm. so I do the graduation and and I know earlier you told me the barriers you were thinking me now. I, I like this thing, but we, we don't really connect. Yeah. I have issues, so you are pushing back uh, and all of that. So yes, yeah. So you know, this is a guy. So I mean, I'm in church. I'm actually telling God, please give me the strength to forgive myself, mm. to ask for forgiveness from those I've wronged. Okay, if I can remember their names, or maybe if I haven't lost their number. So, I pray and uh, the pastor on the sermon is actually saying, I know some of you are begging God for forgiveness right now. I know some of you don't know how to do this. Just come to the altar. Just come and kneel before God. And at that moment, I didn't care how uncool it looked mm. to be saved or how my social rating would suffer or how many parties I wouldn't get invited to, or, you know. So just, it was one split-second decision, and you I went, knelt. You went to the front, you knelt. I went to the front, mm -hmm. someone placed their hands on me, like three people. The next thing I remember, I just well, felt... Well, man, you, you needed those three people to place hands on me. But, seriously, what happened? What, what did you feel after that? I actually teared, as in, I've, I cried so much, it was... I even couldn't stand. I actually had to be lifted up. Yeah, I just felt so happy and relieved. And just this emptiness I've had for years, 20 plus years, was finally not there anymore. I knew I didn't know the answers, but that moment, I knew I had God in my life. And that was the most amazing thing. Wow. 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 It's so true. To score in life, you've got to get tight with the coach. Uh, very quickly. You got saved. I'm sure you have had temptations. You had to deal with forgiving some of the people and dealing with your lifestyle, addictions. Has it been easy and what has been helpful? I won't stand here and say it's been easy. It hasn't. But God has surrounded me with people. I think half the pastors here either know my story or pray for me. Pastor Kuria, for instance, as in I've had such a support system. My LG, you know, he tests you in the places that matter the most. ILG, we had to save it again. The guy, my prayer partner, he, he fell back. We prayed for him. He's getting married on the 24th. So as I was praying, I was telling God, save me, save Kevin. You know, you're having a prayer partner who is also addicted to smoking and alcohol. It's not such a good idea at the start. But at least our prayers, you know, <laughs> I, could, <laughs> I could pray for two. Eh? At any particular time, I knew Half the time, the issue I'm going through, because either the, he was supposed to be the designated driver, and then, you know. So, the LG really helped. They prayed for us, and then I'm actually an usher in Mavuno. And <laughs> wow. Yes. So, the fact that I know there's someone waiting for me to smile and show them a seat, maybe for two, or, you know, just serve God. So, and I had to make sure that my service of God didn't override my worship of him. So I had to be in church, whether I do the, the entire three services Saturday and the two on Sunday. It didn't matter. As long as I was serving God, I didn't know how the week was going to be from Monday, but I knew. So and I also learned how to pray. That's the best thing Mizizi taught me. And then I used to pray the same prayer for food, sleep. You, you tell me you are sick. I'll even start. God bless his food. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Well, I love what you're saying. The support system, the serving, and the church being the environment. Hey, guy, I'm proud of you. And we're proud of you, and we thank God for what he's doing in your life. Come on, Mavuno. Let's celebrate one more time. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. You're a story to tell. All right, that's fine. I'll keep this. Wow. Isn't it amazing? To score in life, what do you do? Get tight with the coach. Let me bring us to a place of prayer by saying, how do we get tight with the coach? Now, for some of us, 
We don't have wait to wait to hit rock bottom for life to really get rough on us. We don't have to wait for that. Some of us are already there. We have had the knocks of life. And we have been searching. We are still searching. And the master at the well is saying, come. He has been making advances towards you. He wants to get tight with you. He has been speaking to you all through. He's saying, I love you. You see, he doesn't care what you've been doing. He is it. He's able to deal with it. Look at this woman. She had had five husbands, as we will see uh, next week. And she was living with another man. But God says, don't, I mean, Jesus entertains her, talks to her, and is willing to give her the water. That's the Jesus I serve. And I look at myself and say, I am chosen. Issues and all. I am chosen. He chose me. Have you ever been out when you're a kid, you want to play a game, and someone picks the ball and says, I get to choose my team, and then you're chosen. And you feel, I'm significant. I have something to contribute. That's who you are. The Bible says, we did not choose him, but he chose us. One as you, with all your issues. He chose you. This is what grace is about. And if you have now given your life to Christ, let me just say this as simply as I can. That life will continue to be a game of chasing after the wind until you get to a point where you get tied with the coach. That's when you begin to score. That's when money and life and career and relationships get a direction. That's when you begin to realize that God has a plan for your life. But see, for many of us, there are pushbacks, there are barriers. Maybe the fear of the unknown. I'm sure this lady wondered, what is going to happen to me if I actually give my, uh, my life and take this gift? What will happen? How are others going to take me in my village of Samaria, Saika? How is it going to work? And I'm sure with these stories, many of them wondered, how is it going to go? The fear of the unknown. What about the fear of failure? Am I going to make it? Do I have what it takes to make it? But you see, it's not about you. It's about the coach. Once you get to relate with him, he gives you the power to make it. What about the fear of loss? I'm going to lose out on the parties. Going to lose out on the gang. Going to lose out maybe on some deals, on some money. But the Bible says, what shall this profit you if you gain all of these things and lose your soul? And you never get satisfaction. Or maybe the fear of rejection. Some of us just fear, I'll be re uh, God will not even accept me. Or others may not accept me when my life changes. Maybe you say, I'm, I've aborted. I've done the cheeks. I've done the wine. I've done the corruption. I've done this and that. How can I be accepted? How can God accept me? You see, God says, come. He's a God of grace. And this is your day today. It all gets down to this. The faster you realize that, to score in life, get tied with the coach, the better for you. The more life you have to live with meaning. But some of us are already born again, like myself. You've already gotten a relationship with the coach. But like every relationship, there are ups and there are downs. Sometimes you get out of step in the relationship and you're not tight anymore with God. Fall back into sin. Fall back into temptation. Fall back into a place of hurtness. Just feeling, I don't feel God anymore. But you see, commitment keeps you there. But I also hear God telling us from Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, He says this, Yet I hold this against you. You are forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you're fallen. And he says, do two things. So you used to love me much. You were so tight with me when you were doing Mizizi, when you gave your life to Christ. Those days, it was good between us. And God is saying, what happened? Why did you quit on me? Why did you walk away from me? And he's saying, this is how you can get back to this relationship. Repent. Change your mind. Change your ways. And number two, do the things that you did first. 
this last week I, I was writing down 10 things I want to do in my next decade the next 10 years saying these are the 10 things I'm praying about and number one on the list was this I want to rediscover God I love Jesus but I get dry sometimes I feel like I've lost some zeal that I used to have some times ago I confess to you I feel like I don't pray as much as I would like to pray. That I want to stay more with God. I feel like I want to love His Word a little bit more. I feel there are times that I'm a little out of step with what He's doing. And I said, number one, in the next decade, I want to be curious enough just to go full throttle. I want to rediscover God and what this coach has got in store for me. Get back to your first love, the love you had for God. What if, as I finish this intro to my series, what if all of us just reflected long enough to realize that these games of life will never satisfy us? This water of money and a good ride and sex and porn and all of this, This water will never satisfy you. You keep coming back. But there's a water that Jesus gives. That gives satisfaction. Doesn't end all struggles, but it's a living water. And it gets to satisfy us. What if we drank that water? What if we connected with the giver and the gift? What if we got ourselves out of our places of comfort and went all for Jesus? And really got to know him. You see, Christianity is not about doing things. It's not about the game. It's not about the rules. It's first about a relationship with the coach. To score in life. I didn't hear you. To score in life. I want to challenge you this morning. As we begin this series. Get back to God. He's waiting for you. He has water that satisfies. Let's bow our heads and let's pray together. Almighty God, I know sitting here, many of us who have struggled with desperation in life, we have felt and we know it. We're not getting the deal we signed up for. That the games of life have left some of us wounded, some of us in trouble. But Lord, we sit here today because we are searching, because we want more in life than what we've got. And Lord, I pray for those of us who have never given our lives to Jesus, that this will be the day. And those of us who have but need to repent and go back to the first love, that this will be the day. And so right now, I want to pray for those of us who have never come to the coach. Who have never said, I want to know you. I want to give my life to you. I want to, I want to pray that your story in life will begin afresh right now. So I want to ask you to raise your hand wherever you are. There's a God speaking to you. Who has been speaking to you through the game of life. And saying, I am here. Come to me. Go ahead right now. Raise your hand and say, that's me. I need Jesus. I surrender my life. Raise your hand. I see a hand raised to my left right there. Anyone else? Just raise your hand. He's inviting you to take the living water. I see a hand right at the back at the overflow. Thank you very much. Someone else, just raise your hand. There's a God who loves you. Loved you to death. I see a hand right in front here. Come on, Mavuna, let's just celebrate these men and women. Anyone else, just raise your hand wherever you are. And as you raise your hand, I see a wa- Anasha walking towards you. Please just stand up. Someone wants to come to you and give you some uh, booklet uh, and talk to you. So raise your hand and stand up. Join those who have raised their hand and ushers have already gone into them. Come on, go ahead. This is Jesus inviting you. You don't have to go back to the same games of life. There's a God who loves you so dearly. Another one I saw at the back. Anyone else before I close? Go ahead and raise your hand. 
Jesus loves you. And he wants you to get this water. I don't want to leave you out. Anyone else? I ask. All right, Mavuno, let's celebrate those who raise their hands and just thank God for them. Some of us need to get back to the first love. We've left it. And you know so well, Jesus is telling you, get back to me. Get back to that zeal and passion that you had. If that's you, go ahead and stand up right now. Stand with me. Thank you. Thank you. You know that you've lost the age. You know that you've lost the age. Uh, you know that some passion you've lost in the way. You know you've gotten out of step with Jesus. I know there are many more people than this. Go ahead and stand up right now. Jesus is saying, I want to revive you. I want to give you a fresh fire that you would follow me. Any more, just stand up right now. I want to pray for you as we close. Thank you. Let's celebrate these dear ones who are standing right now. Let me pray for us. Lord, I just want to thank you that you're inviting us back to the living water, to Jesus himself. I want to pray for these friends right now that you will revive them, Lord. You will just bring them back to that zeal for God, for prayer, for the word of the Lord for church, for small group. Give them that zeal to continue to search after you. Lord, we pray that they will reconnect with you at the place where they disconnected. We want to pray that whatever is holding them back will be broken. Every barrier will be broken. And we pray that the grace of God that gives us the strength to say no to all ungodliness will be released to these men and women. So we celebrate them right now once again as they come back to that first love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come Mavuno, let's celebrate just these people. Let me ask all of us to stand as I close. Now, for those of us that I saw who raised their hands and, and an usher came to you and maybe one or two of you, the usher never came to you. We want to ask you after this to go to the prayer tent. The prayer tent is right at the back. You don't go down the ramp, but right at the back, uh, on the left, you will see a place written, the prayer tent. Please go there and usher and a pastor would love to pray with you and just counsel with you. And if you need any prayer in this area, please feel free to go there. Now, I want to invite you next week to invite someone to come. But I want to remind you about Mavuno Praise. I don't have the sleep here, but how many of you have gotten this? We are in a season of prayer. We are waiting on God and we are reviving our relationship with Christ. This is one way of doing it, getting back to the coach as a church. So I want to invite you, just pray through this this week. And on the 13th, um, we're going to be fasting. One of the days we're going to be fasting, 14th actually, we're going to be fasting and pray. I want to ask you between 6 in the morning and 6 in the evening to skip, you know, two meals, breakfast and lunch. And let's pray together. Let's just be at a place of fasting as we reconnect with the coach. Let me bless you as you go. Just stretch your hands and let me bless you. Almighty God, we just can't wait to see what you're going to do this month and how many people you're going to bring back to yourself and how you're going to be ministering to us and how we, you will just stir up our fire for God in the place of prayer, the word, and fellowship. So Lord, I want to pray for my friends and bless them with a zeal for the Lord, with a passion for the coach, with a, a new found hunger and thirst to get to have the living water. I want to bless my friends with the grace of God that accepts us, that tells us we are chosen and we are loved. I want to bless my friends as they go into the week with the God who watches over them. As they go out, as they come in, they will be blessed. Every day of this week and in their prayers as Mavuno prays, they'll be set on fire 
in the place of prayer. So I bless my friends now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And Mavuno said, Amen. Let's give it up one more time to the Lord Jesus Christ and celebrate Him. God bless you. See you next week. And make sure you invite someone as we continue with the series.